Hello everyone, this is Yoho Joe from SRL Forms, and in this video tutorial I'll be teaching you how to make your very first, very basic, first script in Simba. And before watching this tutorial, I suggest you go to the SRL Forms and check out the Tutorial Island section found right here. Going to the Scripting Tutorials and going to the Tutorials for Beginner section. And maybe read some of these top three stickies here, glance at some of these other threads. And they all just show you the very basic beginner things you should know about scripting, functions, variables, includes, things like that. And I know at first this might all be overwhelming, but you just have to glance through, get a basic idea of what's going on. And as we go through this video, you'll learn a lot more. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to make a script for some Flash games and not actually RuneScape. Because when I first started scripting, scripting for RuneScape was a little too overwhelming for me and to get my skills down and get a better understanding of how everything works I first made scripts for flash games so we'll be making scripts for a couple flash games today the first one will be spank the monkey and this is a flash really old flash game many of you might be familiar with you can just google it and find it here and as you can see the point of this game is to grab this hand and spank this monkey. Very simple. Just like that. Let me try to get a faster one because then they play nice music. There we go. So now what we're going to do is open up Simba right here. Whoa. There and make a script that will spank the monkey for us. First things first, we need to name our program right here. And you can name this anything you want. We'll call it spank the monkey. Save a few lines. So now the very most basic core functions that are built into Simba do not require the SRL include and their names often have to do with exactly what they do. So if we think about when we're playing this game, the first thing we do is move our mouse and hold our mouse down on the hand. So what we're going to do is first you want to target the client. And what you're doing here is telling Simba we want to focus on just this game right here. What it also does is down here tells you the dimensions of where your mouse is. So as you can see when I move to the very top left corner, I'm at the very, it shows down here that I'm at like 3, 0, which means I'm at the top left of this game. Those are the X and Y coordinates of this game. So as I move my mouse to the right, the X coordinate will go up. As I move it down, the Y coordinate will go up. So first thing, like I said, we do is we move our mouse. So we go after this begin. And after each begin in a script, you want to make a couple spaces. These are called standards, and that's how you just organize and make everything look pretty in your script. So I'm going to start typing move or move mouse and a trick you can do is press control enter and it'll tell you all the different procedures and functions that begin with move. And in this case there's only one move mouse. So now I'll press enter. Have an opening parenthesis and as you can see here it tells me exactly what it wants to know. The X and Y coordinates of where I want my mouse moved. So since I already dragged my crosshair to the game, I'll move my mouse here. And as I can see down in the very bottom, the coordinates are 658, 208. Another way of doing this is using the color picker tool right here and moving it to the game and clicking. What this does is tells me the coordinates and also the color of what I just clicked. So now we'll go back to this move mouse and type 658. D9 as the X coordinate, comma, and then oftentimes you want to put a space after commas because that's proper standards, 210. Closing, and at the end of each line you want a semicolon. So let's see what this does so far. We'll drag our crosshair and press play, which is also F9. Sorry about that, my the F9 key also pauses my recording, so I'll just be clicking play and see what happens. There you have it. The mouse moves straight to the hand, which is perfect. That's the first thing we do. 
Next, when we're playing this game, after we move our mouse to the hand, we want to drag it around. So, what do we do on our mouse? We hold the key down. So, H O L D, Control Enter. Now, this isn't always necessary. I could just type hold mouse and type and do it myself. But oftentimes, there's many functions that begin with the same the same words, and you want to see all of them. Like a lot of the find functions, find. As you can see, I have a long list of different find functions. So, hold and enter. And I want to hold the mouse exactly where it is. So, we'll look at our earlier numbers 659, And That will cause the script to hold the mouse down. And what do we do after we hold it down? We drag it over, or basically move the mouse toward the right end of the screen. So I'll just choose any point past the monkey by using this color clicker and coordinate picker. And it says right here where those coordinates are. So first we move our mouse to the hand with move mouse, hold it down, and now we're going to move the mouse past the monkey. Move the mouse and the coordinates right down here that I just picked are 22190. And after that, we want to let go of the mouse, because since we told it to hold mouse, it's never going to let go of holding the, the mouse until you let go. So then we release mouse. And what we want to do now is declare some variables. Variables, as you should all know from algebra, are just letters or words or anything that represent a number. To do this, you just declare them at the top. You can type VAR to let the script know you're making some variables. Our variables will be called x and y, and now we tell them what they are. They are integers, and like I said, semicolon. The reason I'm doing this is because we can release the mouse anywhere, but that would be odd. You just want to release the mouse wherever your mouse is. So x, y, meaning just release the mouse wherever you are. Wherever the mouse is, let go of it, if that makes sense. So theoretically, this script should do the job. Let's see what happens. What happened is I am stupid. Integer, not integers. Oh. Also, I forgot. In the hold mouse, let's show you guys here. There's one more parameter I forgot. So let's go back. Hold mouse. And as I type, it'll tell me. I need my x and y integers, and as you can see here, click type. Click type means if you want to left click or right click. Uh, I'm pretty sure 1 is for right left click, and 2 is for right click. So let's finish this line off again. I want to hold the mouse at 659, 210, and I want it to left click. I said with one, I believe. Same thing with release mouse. You want to let it know if you want to release the left key or the right key. So down here, I'd put a one again. And oftentimes, instead of playing a script, you can just see if it compiles first by clicking the script, compile. As you can see here, successfully compiled, which means my script should work. At least all the code makes sense. So let's try this again. There you go. 289 miles per hour, and that happened pretty instantly. So that is the basics of holding, releasing, moving the mouse, things like that, and using coordinates. Now when you actually make RuneScape scripts, you're going to use colors, not coordinates, because if you're going to be clicking and moving to the same coordinate every time, Jagex will catch on to what exactly you're doing. Now let's get a little more advanced and play a game called Save the goldfish, I believe. You can just Google it. And let's see. This is it right here. So you just click OK. And the point of this game is basically there's some jerk putting goldfish in a frying pan. And what you want to do is put them back into the fish bowl so they don't get cooked. So I'll, uh, I'll play it for just a second so you guys can see how it works. You have a little hand as your cursor. 
and you want to grab grab these fish, drop them in. It's pretty fun, pretty time consuming. I used to play it when I was young. And as you can see, it gets faster and faster over time. So it gets harder and harder to play. Later on, he puts in multiple fish, blah, 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 things like that. So let's make a new script. Get out the old ones. This will be called Save the Goldfish. So in our last script, we put everything in between this beginning and end. But another thing you can do is make your own procedures and functions that you can call anytime easily. So, as you can see in the beginning of this game, the first thing we need to do is go through these menus, click OK, things like that. So, let's make a procedure that does that. So, you type procedure. And it will become bold because it's one of those keywords. And we'll call this start game, semicolon. And then inside each procedure, you want a beginning and end. So, begin two spaces after each begin and the first thing we do is click OK so we want to drag our crosshair so we know what Simba needs to focus on use our color and coordinate picker click on this OK button as you can see coordinates are right there so two spaces click mouse and enter the coordinate of where I want to click great and then let's see what's next next you click the I'm ready button but since, like I said, everything happens here so instantly, we want to maybe wait a second in case our computer's a little slow or something between each clicks. So we'll put wait. And Simba counts in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds would be a second. So we'll wait one and a half seconds. And then once again, we would want to click I'm ready right here. Click mouse and the coordinates, which I'm getting from the bottom of the screen. Semicolon. Let's see what's next. And then you need to click start. So we'll wait another. We'll actually make this just half a second. And last but not least, we need to click start. So once again, click mouse. 346, 160. And how procedures work is you can call them wherever you want in other procedures and down here, which would be called the main loop. So instead of, let's say I wanted to start the game twice, all I would have to do instead of typing this code out twice, I can just write start game. And that means it will do this. If I type it twice, it will go through the, doing these clicks two times, which is unnecessary. So let's see if what we did compiled first by clicking script compile. No, wrong. Uh, like I said, uh, when you're clicking the mouse, holding the mouse, things like that, you need to say which mouse button you want to click. One is for left click. So I forgot to do that. There we go. So let's refresh. Drag the crosshair to the game. And see if this compiles. Yes, it does, right there. And let's see if this works. These guys will all have to deal with this a lot later. We have silly little problems that don't work for some reason. Let me try one. I'm going to write activate client, which means it'll pop this window up to the front and focus on this. No. Let me try moving the mouse there first, because you don't just click, you have to move the mouse to the code next to you. Yeah, that seemed to work. So, 
I guess before you click mouses, you need to first move the mouse there. You can't just click on those coordinates without moving there first. So what I'm doing now is adding move mouse in the same coordinates as where I want to click. So I'll be moving the mouse where I want to click before I actually click it, which makes sense. Move mouse. There. Refresh. Crosshair, and this should get us into the game. Correct. Awesome. So now, so far, we have our start game procedure, which gets us into the game. And the next thing you want to do is save the goldfish. So I'll make a procedure called save goldfish. Begin. And so, so a human would play this game because we know what the fish is, we know what it looks like, and then we click it, hold it, drag it, let go. Simba recognizes things differently. They recognize either by color or bitmaps or DTMs, which you can learn about later. They don't you can't just tell Simba to grab fish. There's no function like that. So as you can see. All these fish have a pretty distinct orangish color, but but the orange color isn't always the same. Like when I pick a color here, this white would be this color one six seven 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 two one five. But the orange on the fish it changes over time, and it's not the same on every fish. As you can see, the longer the fish are in the pan, they get more cooked and change to a darker color. As you can see, it's getting a lot darker than the fish in the thing, in the bowl. So in order for this script to work, instead of just using find color, I'm going to use find color tolerance. What this does is add some tolerance, some variable, like variance, to the orange color I'm looking for. So first thing you want to do is if find, uh, now I'm pressing control enter, I'm going to... We'll use fine color spiral tolerance. And you can see the variables here are x and y being um, this will return x and y will turn into the coordinates of where the color is found. Color is the color of the fish, so we'll just make up a number for now. Xs, ys, xe, and ye would be a box around where around which to find the fish. So we'll just do one, one, five, five for now. And tall is tolerance, which means how much tolerance do you want to add? If we use a very high tolerance, like two fifty five, which I believe is the highest, that is way too much and it'll find just any color. But if we use a smaller tolerance more down like twenty, it'll find the orange color we tell it to and a few little off shades of that orange. Now this code here is just a placeholder we're going to actually find where we want to do this. First thing I'm going to do is pick a color of the fish, which I'll do right now. Wait till a fish is down there. Click the color picker and it's nice because it freezes the screen. As you can see there's a darkerish color here, so I'll take that. And the fish bounced around a few times, so I'll take another color. That one just died. There's another one after two bounces. Another color after three bounces. And that should be good enough. So what I'm going to do is, since there's multiple different fish colors and things like that, after they bounce they get darker, I'm going to use all these different colors I just picked, starting with this lightest one. And then I'm going to put four because we're going to have it find multiple colors. Copy and paste this line. So use one, two, three. And then, as you can see, if, uh, if you read the tutorial, so there's if then statement. So if it finds any of these colors, then I want a two. So let me insert all these different colors. Orange. There we go. 
next part is the these four, which is a box around which to find. As you can see, a box means this will be the top left of my box. This will be the bottom right, and these coordinates right here would be a box from here to there. So let's see where the fish box ends up. Remember to always make sure your crosshairs drag so you get the proper coordinates. So they don't bounce. They bounce pretty high sometimes. So I'll go top left will be here, and the bottom right will be just down to the pan, or maybe a little under the pan, so we can catch them right as they come up. Shut up. So here's the coordinates I just picked for our box in which to search for that color. I'll copy and paste right here. that for all my different colors. So let's see what we just did. If find color spiral tolerance, which means it's gonna look for a look for this color with a tolerance of twenty within this box I picked. And wherever that color is found, the coordinates where it's found, it'll call those X and Y. And the spiral on color spiral tolerance basically means it spirals out uh, when searching for the color, it spirals out from a certain point on the screen, in this case, X and Y. I'll, I'll like start looking here and go, where's that orange? It's not really important. But as you can see here, I use variables X and Y, so I need to define those. So when doing that inside procedures, you go right before the begin, and just like before, you type VAR for variable, X, Y, integer, semicolon. So I said, if you find this color in this box, or this color in for this one, or this one, or that one, then we want to start doing so only if these are found we're going to start doing something else. So again, we're going to move mouse and see how here I'm using XY? That's because wherever that color is found it will be called I mean, the coordinates of where it's found will be X and Y. So instead of using numbers now, I can use X, Y. Because that's where the color is. So you want to move the mouse there. I'm going to hold the mouse with the left mouse button. And one thing is, X and Y are where we're moving our mouse and between where when we move it and when we actually hold down the fish might have moved a little bit so what I'm going to do is redefine X and Y now by using get mouse mouse which means get the mouse position where the mouse currently is and I'm going to call that X and Y so I'm going to move let's say the color is at 5-5 five, five. this will move them this will tell us the color is at 5-5 five, five. mouse will move to 5-5 five, five. let's say the fish moved a little bit now it's at 7-6 I'm not making any sense. Don't worry about it. Forget it. Scratch that. We'll hold the mouse down, and then we want to move the mouse above that uh, fishbowl. So let's get the coordinates of this fishbowl about up here. Let me make sure I drag that crosshair first to get the proper coordinates. Right there. So we're going to move the mouse to the color. Hold the mouse down, the left mouse button, indicated by this one. Move the mouse above the bowl, which is at those coordinates. And release the mouse above the bowl, and we're going to be releasing the left mouse button. And then after that, we're done. The fish is back in the bowl. So end. For every begin, you need to end, and then another end right here. A lot of people don't like when bold words are capitals, but I love it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll leave them lowercase. So let's see what we've just done. We have a procedure called Start Game, which basically just clicks through these buttons and waits a little bit in between each. And then a procedure called Save Goldfish, which finds these orange colors, moves the mouse to them, holds the mouse down, moves the mouse above the ball, let go of the mouse. So that sounds pretty perfect. 
another thing is, let's see if this compiles. Yes, it did. Uh, you can have as many procedures and functions and things like that up here, but the only thing the script actually does is what's between this begin and end in the very end of your script. So if I were to run this right now, the script would start the game and then stop. Even though this is here, I never call it down here in the main loop, so it never happens. So we start the game once, but we want to save the goldfish forever, so we're going to do repeat. And instead of typing all this again, I can just do save goldfish. Also, after every repeat, you want to make two spaces for standards. And you need to tell when to repeat until. So until, and if you want it to repeat forever, you put until false. This means it's going to repeat until forever. So let's see if we can compile this. Yep. And assuming all of our colors correct, our box around where to search is correct, and I put a high enough tolerance, this should work properly. So we'll drag our crosshair, click play, and see what happens. All right, the game started. Let's see if we've done it properly. Yes, it's working so far. So what's happening is, like we can see, uh can't move the mouse because the script's controlling it, but what's happening is, if you look at 918, it's finding any of these different colors in this box I created, which is basically a box area above this pan, and it's using a tolerance of 20. And we're using tolerance, like I said, because the fish orange, they're all a different shade of orange, and as they bounce around, the orange gets darker. So if any of these colors are found, I'm now down at line 24, we'll move the mouse to the color which is now stored at XY. We'll hold the mouse down with the left mouse button, indicated by this 1, and then we'll move the mouse to 37150, which is right above the fishbowl, and release the mouse. And as you see in the main loop, starting at line 32, we begin the game and repeat saving the goldfish until false. And a long time ago, many years ago, when I had an old one-core processor computer with 256 gigs of RAM, I would run this script when I was back in fifth grade. And as you can see, now there's two, three, multiple fish going in that pan. I would run this on my computer for multiple hours, and there were probably a hundred or more scripts in this pan, and my computer would lag just on this silly flash game because my script is way too good at it. And anyways, as you can see, this is going really fast, not dropping any fish at all, not letting any of them die, and winning, being awesome. So to stop the script, because the mouse is now controlled by the script, you can't really, it's kind of hard to get over and stop it. You can press Control alt s That stopped the script. We now have control again. So that would be the end of this video tutorial my, on how to make your first very basic scripts, getting comfortable with Simba, mouse moving, mouse clicking, waiting, color clicking, basic things like that. And you can get a lot more ideas and things like that, like I said, back in this Tutorials for Beginners section. By reading through all of these, you know, find a lot of more different color, mouse, and other functions. And in my later tutorials, I'll probably be teaching you how to actually include SRL and using that uh, to auto in RuneScape and not just Flash games. And what I suggest to you is when actually watching and doing this tutorial, instead of just watching along, you should also open up Simba, open up the Flash games I'm doing, and type along with me, and actually do everything I did so you can get comfortable with actually scripting yourself. Because just watching won't teach you that much, but actually doing it along, making these scripts yourself, will help you a lot in understanding how everything works and get you more practice. Uh, thanks for watching, and expect more videos in the future.